What has been your biggest lesson learned doing business here in Canada? What I have learned doing business here is, yeah, you do have to focus on multiple sources of income. Change is, your growth is outside of your comfort zone. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Business. My name is Esti and I'm your host today. And with me, we have a lovely guest, Ibrahim Qureshi, who's going to tell us about his journey as a business person and what he's doing today and how this might be of interest for uh, immigrants who are either looking to come to Canada or, or who are here already. We're going to explore some things that he's involved with today. Welcome Thank to the you. show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. To get us started, tell us about your journey to being an entrepreneur. Uh, give us a little sense for a couple of minutes what you've done, how you got here, and how you ended up in Canada. So I started my entrepreneurship when I was young because our family, my dad has been always been running his own businesses. So back in 99, 2000, it's the first time I opened up my own shop out in Texas. I was still in school, but I was so passionate about running my own business and being in business. So I started off with a cell phone store there, small setup, and it grew from one to two shops. And um, from there, um, I continued to grow. We sold the businesses after the businesses were up and going and we moved out to Toronto and opened up another couple of locations out there. So entrepreneurship is uh, something that I didn't get education on because I'm an engineer by trade or by education, but it's something that I learned from my father and learned from just getting into the industry and really working towards it. So you, you understood that you didn't want to be the worker bee, you really wanted to be an entrepreneur. 100%. I, something I didn't want to do is work for somebody else because that's the issue right now is when you go out there and uh, work, um, work is great. Some people are passionate about it. Like my brother, so younger brother, you know, he, he, he's more of a worker bee. So he understands how to manage his finance when he's working. Right. But when we opened up a business for him, he just didn't. So you ended up in Vancouver, right, after yes. Toronto? After Toronto, I went back to Texas, then in Chicago. And from Chicago, I came to Vancouver back in 2009. Okay. And uh, even here, it was the same thing. I tried applying for a job because there was nothing set up here. Um, then uh, I started looking for businesses. I started looking for shops that were available. And I found a shop when I uh, in Coquitlam, and I set up my shop there. And that business is still up and running right now. Amazing. So the employee that was working with me ended up taking over. Okay. And so what are you doing today? Today, I got introduced to what's called the cryptocurrency or Bitcoin back in 2012. I was a broker for it. But from 2012 to 2018, there wasn't enough information or enough guidance on it. So when I got involved, I kind of dormanded it until 2018 when I relived it and um, I had a few friends that introduced me to different cryptocurrencies. So from 2018 onwards, I've been uh, learning and studying cryptocurrency, been educating people, been guiding people, and just from the journey that I went through of this, the media scaring people about crypto to really truly understanding what, is, what it is and how it works. Okay, and so today you are part of I'm, I'm the VP of sales for New Era. Um, it's a company that we registered um, last year. Out in Dubai, I had an opportunity to fly out there, uh, gather with a team of people that have over three decades of uh, information and of knowledge. And we decided that we need to set up a company that would educate the masses. And so when we created uh, New Era, um, we launched it here in Canada in September. We were able to set up uh, three offices here where people get to come hands-on and learn about uh, different industry but more focused on how to get into the crypto market because the issue right now is a lot of people want to get on board but there are a lot more scams out there than there are legitimate companies that are actually educating you. So we give kind of educate you in every aspect of cryptocurrency. That's great. Now, crypto has had a bumpy ride, uh, but it's again, it's a hot topic these days. Why do you think it's, what is crypto for those that are listening may not be uh, familiar with it? And why does it have the staying power that it does? See, cryptocurrency right now is, there's, the world is getting divided into two areas right now. We got centralized and decentralized. You know, centralized, a lot of our power gets 
pulled away from us. But on a decentralized platform, meaning that there's no control. Um, you could do your transaction, there's more transparency to it. Um, on the blockchain, you could actually validate and, and uh, verify when transfers are happening, when transactions are happening. It is, um, it, to me, is more trust, to me, is more transparency. And the way the crypto uh, works is just the way uh, in the stock market where the companies that are making big decisions such as Apple, Tesla. Similarly, what I look at crypto as is solution that is out there and you're buying fractional ownership of uh, that company or that project. And with Bitcoin, from what I understand, I mean, it's a finite amount, which is why it has this inherent value that it keeps, right? And that's why we're seeing it to go up, because we know there's only a certain amount of, of Bitcoin that will be made. Um, and that's, you know, people are seeing the value of it to be able to be a form of money, because you can use it to purchase things, yeah. right? So it makes life, you know, in, in terms of the online space and other things, it makes life a little bit easier with how we do commerce. It is. Right now, uh, crypto is still not a currency, even though it's, it's says as a cryptocurrency. But to me, it's still an asset. The more you hold, the longer you hold it, the better results you will uh, get with it. But yet again, results are not guaranteed because it's, it's so new. Things are still evolving. Things are still changing. But yet it was designed for us to transact a lot better, to do transfer, to uh, transfer assets from one to the other. And, and have clarity of when, when uh, transactions happen. And now I think we're starting to see a bigger audience, you know, the legitimate audience, legitimate, I mean, the bankers that are now getting into the field of, of uh, with ETFs and things like that as well, which is super exciting. So there's more and more legitimacy in adoption. There is more legitimacy in adoption. There's more awareness now, more positive awareness than negative one yeah. uh, prior to when we got involved in it. So, you know, it's one of those industry, at the end of the day, either you're going to be the end users of it or you're going to be uh, making money off of it. Okay. You know, so. And you feel there is the opportunity for the average person to be involved with crypto, trading it, holding it, and this is why New Era is so important for you, because I know you're passionate about education. Exactly. Um, but that New Era, is the reason why we created it is the education. You know, yet a few days ago, I was watching uh, this motivational video uh, where it was more like Shark Tank. And one thing they said in there is, if there was a gold rush, who would make the most money? And, uh, you know, I, I thought about it. And the answer to that was the person that's selling the shovel. Because <laughs> right? so, yeah. if I could show you, sell you the shovel, meaning if I could give you the tools and if I could give you how to use that tools and then exactly show you where to use those tools, you will have a higher success rate than just jumping into something and not really understanding it. Right. That doesn't make sense. And you know, we, we went through a lot of expensive education, meaning that we lost a lot of money just learning in the process of it. So we don't you know, want people to kind of uh, start off that way. We want people to start off the right way and not make the mistakes that we've made. So have the knowledge and put a little bit of money as, as part of your portfolio with, you know, they talk about diversity in portfolios. Uh, traditional ways of, of investing, but also that crypto welcomes a new opportunity to invest in a new world, as long as you have the education to understand what you're doing. Yeah, as long as you understand how to study a coin, you know, there are so many crypto coins out there, mm -hmm. right? But only 10% of them are legitimate, proper tools. And that is the reason why the government is still working towards regulating. A lot of countries have already regulated this. Um, you know, the up and coming thing that's happening right now is the central bank digital currency. Mm -hmm. I don't know, a lot of people are aware of it or not. But that has already been introduced and being introduced. Now, all that generally means is, you know, the government could program your currency and allow you to do the transactions. You know, a lot of things have changed, you know, before people used to write checks. Then we were pushed from checks to having those cards. Then the cards, now we have our phones to pay. So we are adopting to the trend and the things that are coming up. But if we do not have the knowledge or the understanding of it, we will be left behind. We will be using those tools, but we won't have the right information 
on how to actually invest in it or how to really create. And you know if the government's getting involved that there's something there there's as something well, right? There. They're paying attention and that's the future. So um, so your platform's all about um, helping people to, and your platform's around the world. It's not just a, here in Canada. You've got members from all over the world that are on there learning about crypto, but you also teach digital marketing. You also teach about Forex. Yes. So what uh, we're talk what we want to do, what our plan was to, uh, you know, make uh, people, all people have different skills, different, different ways of looking at it. So we didn't want to be just truly focused on one area of it because there, I know a lot of businesses are moving online. There's, you know, a lot of people are still making money through Amazon, but then yet again, I don't know how to start off in an Amazon right. uh, service. You know, people have skills uh, where they could create a lot of good content, a lot of good material. They just don't know how to really put it out there. So yeah, we are guiding people on how to stay traditional by, you know, creating a book and, and selling a book online to learning how banks make money through Forex trading. So we have different areas um, in New Era where you could learn from, where you could educate yourself with. And we just don't give you the education. We actually give you the tools. We connect you to the right team and we connect you to the right people that have the experience that are helping you grow. And this is a great tool for entrepreneurs, no matter where they are, because it could be part of their own, just their own investment plans for themselves and, and for their business. So you're sharing uh, really important knowledge in how to run your, your own business, whether you're an entrepreneur now or not, but you could be. You could step into the, the world of entrepreneurship Entrepren with this. Let's talk a little bit about uh, immigration for Canada and immigrants who come to Canada that may be interested. What is your opinion uh, of, a, of an immigrant that's looking to come to Canada to buy a business or maybe that one that's already in Canada and interested in buying a business? Uh, what, what's your feeling as to the opportunities for immigrants to do that here? You know, when my parents immigrated out here back in 89, I was young. And uh, the thing is, they, they tried out a few things. They even got into the restaurant business. We opened up a restaurant in, in, um, in Toronto, um, you know, to my dad doing immigration. Uh, so what I would say is be passionate about what you want to do. Don't, don't go for a business that, you know, is just about money. Because there, you know, when I got started in my business, uh, in the cell phone industry, when I opened up my first shop here, one of my friends said that, you know what, one day you'll get burned out, right? So what I would say is always learn new skills, always learn uh, new ways of doing, and then applying, uh, you know, you don't want to invest into a business where you have to learn a whole lot, but um, look at the business as, as a passion. Look at it as, as how you want to build it, not just as, as a means of income or source of income. But you want to be sure that you are willing to do the work for the next, whatever long it takes mm -hmm. to establish yourself. What makes Canada appealing specifically, do you think? Why would an immigrant be drawn to come to Canada to run a business here? Canada is so diversified. We have all, all walks of life. We got people from around the world. Um, people are always looking. I'm, I'm, I like eating out and I like eating more traditional food seeing that, you know, if it's from a country, how traditional is it? Mm -hmm. uh, or, or if it's a business that we're looking at. So to me, Canada is diversified, but in Canada, what I have felt uh, compared to running a business in the U.S. is um, when I opened up my shop in U.S. for the first time, you know, I went into the market buying 100 items of one thing, 100 items of another thing. But when I came here to Canada, um, and I uh, wanted to purchase the same items, but the quantity was lesser because the, the growth here in Canada, uh, you really have to do diversify mm -hmm. in order to have better growth. We're, we're smaller, right? We're one-tenth yeah. the population of the U.S., so that would definitely be an adjustment of also understanding your marketplace, exactly. which obviously takes time as well. What do you think are some of the areas of opportunity for immigrants in terms of the types of businesses that might be available or franchises? Where do you see some opportunities for immigrants? Um, right now, here in Vancouver, I think we were slacking a lot of food industry, <laughs> different areas in food. So if anybody that's coming out here um, to Vancouver, I would definitely say, you know, if, if food is something that you could work on or something you do or open up a restaurant, it's a good opportunity here. Um, 
you know, yet again, I'll compare it to the U.S. There's a, there's a restaurant called Salada's out there. You know, they do fresh, fresh uh, salads, all sorts of salads. And that's something I would hear, in, especially in Vancouver, because I know we're really health conscious. And I've seen a lot of people, you know, working out. So yet again, I'm more focused on the food end of it, because I think that is one of the part of the uh, industry that uh, needs a little bit more work on. Uh, but then uh, there's a lot, a lot of opportunities here. It all depends on where your skill sets are and what you're a lot, you know, how much of skills do you want to learn? Exactly. You have to be open to that evolving as a person 100%. and a business person. What has been your biggest lesson learned doing business here in Canada? What I have learned doing business here is, yeah, you do have to focus on multiple sources of income. Um, you know, ever since I got introduced to passive income, I, my mindset have completely changed. But always look, uh, look at different areas. Always grow yourself and, and uh, really develop yourself because self-development will give you more opportunities into different areas. Yeah, absolutely. We have to uh, keep our, ourselves open to uh, new things, technologies, like the world is, especially now with the advent of things like AI and, you know, there's just so many things coming at us and the, and the information that comes at us every day is so quick that, you know, you need to be able to sort of absorb that and be on top of that to stay current, right? And to stay, to stay relevant. Um, what advice would you have for an immigrant who's thinking about coming to Canada? You mentioned, you know, when you're here, you want to be absorbed in the community and understand sort of what's going on. But to prepare to come to Canada, what would be some things? I, I would say set your goals, set your targets. There's a lot of distractions here in Canada, to be honest. But for the first couple of years, if you stay focused on your goals and your targets and what you want to achieve, you could enjoy Canada or the world as you please but you know it's a it's a big sacrifice uh when you when you leave somewhere where you're comfortable meaning that you have a home you have your own system to come out here and really you know re and rechange things because you do have to do a lot of things i mean from Pakistan, where I came from, you know, we had people that came over that cleaned up and did the chores and the food were cooked. But out here, there's a lot of things that you do have to pick up on that you do have to change on or add on to what you're currently doing. Mm -hmm. So be prepared, be focused, um, change is, your growth is um, outside of your comfort zone. I mean, one thing I think the federal government has done a decent job is that there are resources for immigrants, you know, when they do come here, that they can tap into around language, opportunities, financing. There is actually a very healthy ecosystem in, uh, I mean, I can speak for what I see in Vancouver, for immigrants, whether they're coming yeah. here to do business or not, there are, there's assistance for them, right, to get started. 100%. There's, there's a lot of benefits, a lot of guidance that are here. You just have to find the right channels and talk to the right people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, see uh, the community that's leading the for newcomers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I always say never jump on the first option that they give you. Always look at it, have a second thought. Um, always get clarity on it. If you don't understand it, always ask a question. And, and make sure that that is the right path or the right guide guidance for yeah, you. I, I believe it's uh, the resources are there, but people just have to be tapped into the right community yes. to understand where to go. What's in store for you for this year? This year, I um, first thing I'm really excited in March, I'm traveling out to Dubai because we're having a, a launch for our new era. So right now we're still in the pre-launch stage. Um, we're moving into a newer office, bigger office. That's another exciting part of life. And, uh, you know, I have a few goals of my own. Goals always change, but I have a few goals on my own that I've been achieving and the targets have been hitting. So it's been, it been a great 20, beginning of 2024. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm very hopeful. I think this is just going to be an interesting year uh, for, for many people. There's a lot, a lot of, of people that I've talked to, a lot of people that I've talked to, they're, they're really hopeful that this is the year. Yeah. And, and, you know, just surrounding yourself around positive people. Yes. It, it gives you the right energy. So, you know, understand who, you know, who is positive and what they're telling you. Um, you know, even with me, my journey started with finding a right mentor in 2015 and uh, who I am right now prior to what I was back in 2015. It, I'm a totally different person. So 
because of the coaching and mentorship that you've had as well. Because you don't know what you don't know. And if somebody exactly. has had the success that you see that you want, they know the journey. So they can help. Uh, many, you, many people want to help. You just have to be prepared. You know, you have to be coachable. You have to yes. be, you know, uh, and you have to really understand what your mentor is doing. You know, something that my mentor said, if you don't hate your mentor, they're not doing their job. <laughs> That's so good. I you like have that. To, <laughs> you have to that really, you know, know that whatever they're telling you, they're guiding you is, is for your benefit. And being okay with being uncomfortable. 100%. Because that's how the stretch happens, right? That's how the growth happens. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I was never able to get in front of people until, you know, I started getting mentored and start reading the right books and start developing myself and getting the self-confidence. So yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's a big change when you come out to Canada for the first time. Uh, the environment change, uh, the situation changes, but you just have to stay focused on what you need to accomplish. Yeah, what you want and see the vision for that. How can people reach you? Um, right now, I will share my content, uh, contact information, um, with you guys uh, through a slide. Um, I'm available through WhatsApp, through social media. So we'll have the content uploaded, um, I think. When with we, the video, with the video slide, yeah. we'll have those links. Okay, very good. I want to thank our guest, Ibrahim, today for joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks again for tuning in to Let's Talk Business. Until next time.